Good evening, family. Good evening. Good evening. Am I hot? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Is the mic working? Oh, yes. yes. All right, now. I just had to turn away, bro. You just had to turn away. So now, I've been told that uh, I'm a wanderer. <laughs> Meaning from the mic. That's all right. <laughs> I had to make that clear. That's all right. And so if I get to moving around and y'all can't hear me, y'all just let me know and I'll do my best. But it is good to see you all here tonight. You know, David said I was glad yes, sir. when they told me, let us go up into the house of the Lord. Yes, sir. So I'm good to be with you here tonight. I'm glad to see so many of you out and brave that weather to come out and hear me tonight. So I am grateful for this opportunity. Amen. And I thank you guys for it. I am glad to be here. You know, um, for those of you who are visiting with us tonight, I don't know if you're visiting or not, but if I do have a visitor in the audience tonight, let me welcome you to the whole gate family. Um, our minister, Brother Maxwell, is out traveling, and I see his family back there waiting diligently for him to get home. You know, it's always good to have our brother out doing the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's always good to have him home, too, right? Amen. That's right. I was talking to uh, Young Brooks, and I said, uh, you've been holding down the fort? He goes, yeah, I get the extra piece of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> See, now that dad's gone. <laughs> you know, Amanda and I are new to the congregation here, mm -hmm. and every once in a while, we get to meet new family. Mm -hmm. And I met a new family last night, and it's called Sister Hazel's Food. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, we got invited over to her house, and and it was a spread. I looked at her man, and I said, is this potluck style? How come we didn't bring anything? And everybody's looking at me like, bro, you don't get it. This is how Sister Hazel rolls. <laughs> you just sit down and enjoy yourself. And, and, and not only that, and, and I'm going to get to the lesson here. I'm watching the clock. I, I've already been warned. My wife says she's got the signal and the flag back there waiting for me. And so when she started giving me this, you know, that, means, that means I'm done. But we were sitting there, and I was just feasting. And I had one play, and then I went back for a second play. Third play. <laughs> But then, what, what, what it was also, you know, brothers and sisters started grabbing plates to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then even after a couple of plates were gone, there was still oh, yeah. more food left. Yeah. So, uh, she said, hey, you right on time, man. And she right. told me, she said, brother, at any time you need me, mm -hmm. anytime. She said, you just pick up the phone. That's right. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. I'm only thinking of stuff to have now. I think the youth has to have a dinner about once a month. <laughs> I'm going to get with Brother Maxwell and say, hey, man, we need to have a youth banquet once a month and have Sister Hazel sponsor it, man, <laughs> and go that way. You know, I'm going to talk a little bit. My lesson tonight is going to be a brief one, but I'll repent of that sin later. But it's going to be a brief one. And what I want to talk about is as the world, as the word of God goes in, the word comes out. All right, all right. Now, I'm going to stick right to the book. So if you have your book with you tonight, I'm going to be right in pages 24 and 25. I'm not going to deviate too much from that. So you got the lesson right in front of you, what I want to talk about. Because here's, here's the deal. Children, I want to talk a little bit about children. Children are a great joy. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. And it's been told to me that parenting is one of the greatest joys and privileges any man and woman can experience. Yes. Now, sometimes they can also be a thorn in our flesh. <laughs> but when we look, amen, brother, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but when we look at the world today uh -huh. and everything that's going on and, and, and it's so anti-God yeah. and it's sometimes just outright rebellious to the Lord, yeah. how do we create a clean heart yes, sir. Yeah. Come on now. in our children? All right. All right. How, how do we do that? Yeah. Now, I'm not standing before you as the author with the all knowledge and all power. No not at all, but I just want to share a few things that I've learned along the way. Okay. Now, I got three of them. Uh -huh. right? I got three of them. They're all out the house, and they're all gone, and, you know, they don't call anymore, and they don't want to stop by anymore, you know. But after they get married, they don't even exist anymore. <laughs> you know, you call and they go, hi, I'm sorry. Please call back at another time. I'm busy. <laughs> Two weeks ago, man, the phone was 
Click right off. I call now. I can't even get a voicemail. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but in the world that we live today, and so much is after our kids' heart, yeah. and there's so much just outright sin yeah. in the world. How do we how do we focus and create that clean heart in our children? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm recall the time when I went to my kid's school. My, my son went to Muckatill High School. Now, this, is, this is factual, and okay? this is factual. Muckatill High School is off of 128, so if you go north and you get off at exit 128, he went to Muckatill High School. And I went in and talked to the counselor. We were talking about his grades, and so we were talking, and as I sat there, the counselor had a board or a poster on the side of her board said gay and lesbian group night. Well, right there. Yeah. This is on school property. Mm-hmm. Oh. This is in the counselor's office. Mm-hmm. And so as I stared at that, I purposely started talking about me and my wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I purposely said my wife and I, mm-hmm. or my family and I, because I wanted her to know where I was coming from. Yes, but when you have that kind of environment that our kids live in, mm-hmm. I want to talk about a couple things that I want to look at that says, hey, how do we create that clean heart in our children. Amen. Now, I hope you got your Bibles with you tonight. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Psalms 127. Mm-hmm. Now, I got young Noah up here, and, I, and young Noah's going to read for me, but it's not your turn yet. And I always like to have the young men read yeah. if I get a chance to speak. Tonight, I'm going to have him read. The last time when I was over at Southside, I had all the men read, and, and it took a little long, I hear. <laughs> but we won't do that tonight. <laughs> But in Psalms 127, I I want you to read along with him. I'm going to read all of that. I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. And the Bible says, starting with verse 1, the Bible says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Who build it. That's right. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Mm -hmm. Verse 2, it is in vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late. To eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to get an amen on that one. Behold, the children, the children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are children of one's youth. Mm -hmm. Happy is the man who has his quiver yes, sir. full of them. All right. All right. Read that one more time. Mm-hmm. Happy is the man who has his quiver mm-hmm. full of them. Mm-hmm. They shall not be ashamed, yes, but sir. shall speak with their enemies mm-hmm. in the gate. So children are a blessing to us, brothers and sisters. Yes, so first of all, anytime we talk about creating a clean heart, anytime we talk about growing closer to the Lord, it starts with God's word. Yes. Amen. It starts with his word. And I want to look at it several times. Now this is where, now young Noah, I want you to read for me. Now you, you left and I got you ready, right? You got your verses. Deuteronomy. Open up the Bible. Now, before he gets started, what's my rule in class, guys? I can't, I can't hear. Can't make fun of anyone. Can't make any funny when? When they're, when they're reading. That's right. So that's how I do it in my class. And the same thing goes here. Amen? Amen. Because here, now, now, I get on my soapbox. I got you for just a few minutes. I, I promise I won't keep you long. If our children can't find acceptance here, where are they going to find it? Here, they're not fat. Uh They're not skinny. Uh They're not black. Uh They're not white. Uh They're not short. They're not tall. Uh They're all children that belong to the Lord. And if we can't find acceptance and they can't find acceptance here, Among the saints of God, where are they going to find? So when they come amongst us, they must find love and cherish here. I remember one time my wife told me, because I was kind of early on in my marriage and early on in our kids, I was kind of a straight out tired. I'm just going to tell you, brother, because I was a straight out tired. Now, our kids couldn't watch cable TV. We didn't have cable TV in the house. I don't know, 15 years, we didn't have cable TV in the house. That's what I tell you. They couldn't watch public TV. 
They only could watch movies that I allowed them to watch, which was Winnie the Pooh. T I double bur er Tigger. Right? Um, Barney the purple the purple dinosaur, is that right? Is that, is that right? Did I get it right? Yeah. 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 Right? And and they only had the friends that I allowed them to have. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so my wife says, honey, you want them to come to you for their questions and their answers. Mm -hmm. They have to feel safe in coming to you as their father. Mm -hmm. Parents, grandparents, single parents, nephews, next door neighbors, best friends. Mm -hmm. Our kids must feel safe in coming to us. Yes, That's my soapbox. You're gonna get that every time I preach. Now I'm gonna tell you that right now. Yes, All right, Noah, go ahead and read for me, son. Therefore, Louder, son. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and mm -hmm. in your soul, mm -hmm. and bind them for a sign upon your hand. Yes. That they may be as frontlets mm -hmm. between your eyes. Okay, keep reading. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thy sittest okay. in thine house, mm -hmm. and when thy walk, walkest by the way, mm -hmm. when thy liest down, and when rises up. Alright, so Moses is giving the people the command. He says, hey, when you when you get with your kids, I want you to teach them. Mm -hmm. I want you to teach them. I want you to instruct them. I want you to teach them when they lay down. I want you to teach them when they get up. Whenever you are with your child, I want you to teach them something about the command of God. Alright, mm -hmm. amen. That's all right. amen. I want you to teach. Yes. I want you to instruct because I can guarantee you if you're not going to teach them, right. the school's going to teach them, yeah. their friends going to teach them, yeah. the person they hang out with going to teach them, and they're going to teach them things that you may not want them to know. Right. Right. Somebody's going to do the teaching. Right. One way or the other, yeah. they're going to get taught, and I prefer that they get taught by you and I. Yeah. Now I want to look at a couple things real quick. I want to look at how many times the words to tell that. Colossians 3.16. You don't have to go to each one of these. Just kind of follow along with me. The Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Right? Uh, Ephesians 6, verses 4 through 5. It says, fathers, bring your children up in the training and instructions of the world. You know, that's a perfect scenario. Yeah. Now, but sometimes perfect doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Why? Because sometimes father ain't there. Amen. Amen. Sometimes daddy just ain't there. Amen. Amen. I grew up in a single household. Amen. Sometimes it's grandma and granddad. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's the auntie. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's the best friend who lived down the street who picked the kid up to bring him to church on Sunday morning. That's all right. Whoever it is, somebody needs to do some teaching. I can remember a man that tells me about a young a lady who's to pick her up. Now, I can't remember the lady's name right now. She'll tell me later. But this lady used to pick them up for Bible class. And even to this day, when she's... Now, I can't tell the age because I get in trouble. I'll just say 30 plus plus. Uh -huh. Now, even though now she's older, she still remembers that lady who picked her up mm -hmm. and taught her scriptures out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. yes. Brother Fuller brought a young man to my class Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother. You keep doing what you do. Amen. God's blessed. God's going to be pleased with that. He brought this young man. Now, I've never seen the young man before, and I'll probably never see him again. I got him for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes. I got to get something in there about Jesus. <laughs> My whole lesson changed. I was like, okay, we got we to gotta change, change direction here. That young man started asking me questions. He started asking me about the Bible. He started asking about Jesus. And one thing he left with. He left with the fact that Jesus is our Jesus is our mediator between us and God. Mm -hmm. And the way he put it in his own terms, he said, well, you mean like when somebody stands up to somebody else when they're in trouble? I said, that's Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I said, that's it. Yeah. Whatever it's going to click for you, yeah. that's it. Yeah. He said, that's why no man can come to the Father but through the Son. That's right. Right. Now, he Amen. may never hear that again. But he heard it Wednesday night. Right. Amen. He heard it here. So you keep doing what you're doing, brother. And you Amen. keep doing that. Amen. So the first thing I want to talk about real quick, real briefly, is the way we create that clean heart in our children is we got to love them, brothers and sisters. That's right. We have to love our children. Amen. It's always been said that people don't care how much you know 
until they know how much you care. Thank you, brother. That's right. My wife and I, we've been talking about these kids, and I said, sweetheart, I want to make an impact. She said, well, you let them know that you love them. Yes, yeah, that's right. And you let them, let, them, let them know that you love them with a godly love, mm -hmm. with a Christian love, and you will make more impact that way than you will in any other way. That's right. Yes. One of the things we've been trying to do is we try to go to the kids' outing. We want to catch them outside of church, right? We want to go yeah. to some of the games, and we want to be involved in their life. I had a chance to go to TJ's game. Where's TJ at? He's probably there. There you go. He's back there. Had a little uniform yeah. on. He didn't get a chance to play, but we got wet anyway. And mm -hmm. forward, brother for him. <laughs> Brought me a little place to sit at. But I kind of watched him out there. So we had a chance to go and see him. And then a couple weeks later, Amanda and I went out to Gabby's little, uh, little thing. She plays the violin. And Amanda and I went over there with her and her mom, and we kind of watched them play the violin. And, and, and it's all about being involved and loving them, because you know why? Because God loves you and I. Amen. That's right. Amen. First John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, if you go there and you read that, the Bible tells me how great a love the Father has bestowed upon us that you and I should be called children of God. That's, right. That's beautiful. The word love in there is from the word agape. And the term children in there is, 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 is this idea of it's, it's God's love and who God cherishes. That's right. So when you see that, when he says he has called us, he has called us children, it's that children, that word that said God loves us and God cherishes us for all we do. Amen. And because God loves us and because he cherishes us, God hears us. Okay. Single parents. Single parents. Single parents have a special place in my heart. All parents have a special place in my heart. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Because Amen. single parents, I know y'all got an upwards road. Amen. And you may know some people who are a single parent. And, and that's an upward road. You know, I want to tell you a story about Hagar and Sarah. Mm -hmm. Hagar was a single parent. I'm going to give you a read the digest version right now. But you want the full version? I'll go back and read Genesis 16 and verse Genesis 21. So here's what happens. So Sarah, she gets ahead of God. She's going to do things her way. Now let me tell you right off, that's a whole other level. If we start messing around with God's plan, all we're going to do is muck it up and mess it up. Yes, that's, that's, right. Right. that's right. So here's what happens. So Sarah goes in and tells Hagar, go in there and sleep with my husband so I can have a child who you. So Hagar agrees to that, and she goes in and has a child. But here's what happened. As the course of that time, when she got pregnant, she started having, she looks at Sarah in a different way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She started looking at Sarah, down at Sarah, thinking that she's all that in a bag of chips and a large Coke soda, right? Well, well, well and, and here's what happens, is that Sarah mistreats her and she runs away. Mm -hmm. Now what's beautiful about that is that in her time of grief, I want you to turn over with me real quick here in Genesis chapter 16. Turn with me real quick. Uh, you got to have your Bibles with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 16. Mm -hmm. Now, what's beautiful about this is she runs off. Now, she's running. Mm -hmm. Start with verse 6 of Genesis chapter 16. Mm -hmm. The Bible reads, So Abram said to Sarah, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarah dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Mm -hmm. Now, she's on the run. She runs from her. Now, during this time, an angel of the Lord comes, in, comes into the picture. That's right. Mm -hmm. And during that time, Sarah says, Now I know mm -hmm. that you are the God who hears me. Mm -hmm. In her grief, in her time of anguish, mm -hmm. she said, You are the God who hears me me. Mm -hmm. And what that means in Hebrew, that is the El Roah. That means the God who hears me. Now why is that important? Fast forward to Genesis chapter 21. Now here's what's happened in Genesis chapter 21. In Genesis chapter 21 verses 9 through 14, Ishmael is born. Yes. Mm -hmm. Him and Isaac are hanging out. Mm -hmm. He's making fun of Isaac, and Sarah gets upset. Mm -hmm. 
Sarah goes to Abraham and says, he's got to go. Mm -hmm. Not only does he got to go, but she got to go. Mm -hmm. Now that displeased Abraham. Go ahead and read the story. It said, the Bible says it displeased him, but the angel came back and said, listen to your wife and tell her she got to go. Now, that's a whole other story. A whole other story. Yeah. I'm going to study that one. That's a good lesson. But what I want to get to at this time is Abraham wakes up early in the morning. He packs a lunch. He puts some food in there, a bag of Doritos, mm -hmm. gives her that bag, mm -hmm. reaches in his pocket, mm -hmm. gives her about a 20 spot and says, you got to go. Mm -hmm. I'm putting you out. Mm -hmm. Now I'll paint the picture here. Mm -hmm. I'll paint the picture here. She's just been put out. Yeah. Now I don't know if anybody's ever been put out before, mm -hmm. but she's been put out on the street. Mm -hmm. well, you are the one that's supposed to take care of me. What have I done so wrong that you put me out? That's deep, brothers and sisters. I'm trying to tell you. I don't know if you ever been put out, but I'm going to tell you when somebody puts you out and you walk it up the street and all you got is tears coming down your face, what are you supposed to do? Right. Right. So here is Sarah putting her out, Hagar, walking, and the Bible says she's wandering around in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And to the point where the food's run out, she ain't got no more money, mm -hmm. but at the right time, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. it is. the Lord came to her. Yes, yes, yes. God said, where are you going? Mm -hmm. I have a purpose for Ishmael. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on and tells them what it's about. But what I want to tell you, single parents, is God hears you. Yeah. He yeah. hears your distress. Mm -hmm. He hears what you're going through. He is the God who hears you. Me. Amen. He is the El Roi. Mm -hmm. So single parents, God's listening. Mm -hmm. And he's going to deliver right at the right time. Mm -hmm. He's going to deliver right at the right time. Amen. The second point I want to talk about here is how we create that clean heart in our kids. Is the brothers and sisters, you got to be patient with them. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 you got to be patient with them. Why? Because God is patient with me. Turn to Psalms 103. Turn with me to Psalms 103. Let me show you this real quick. Psalms 103. I should be hearing pages turning or buttons clicking or something, man. We're going through God's word tonight. Amen. Psalms 103. It got to be patient. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you a story here in a minute. We got to be patient with our kids. In Psalms 103, beginning with verse 8, the Bible says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, yeah. slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. Verse 10, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Mm -hmm. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame and he remembers that we are dust. Brothers, we gotta be, brothers and sisters, we gotta be patient with it. I'll tell you a story. One year I coached Pee Wee football. Now there's a charm for you. Mm -hmm. Now our, our previous minister over in, uh, up in Everett, he coaches Pee Wee football, he coaches football. And he likes to have the brothers come and be involved with that. So he said, James, come on and be involved with me one year. So I said, okay, I'm going to jump out there and I'm going to coach Pee Wee football. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> so one day we were out of the game. And I tell you, I had this one boy. This kid would not do nothing. I told him. I said, put your foot here. He put his foot there. I said, put your foot on the left. He put his foot on the right. I said, put your foot on the right. He put his foot on the left. I'm standing on the sideline and I'm holding a little boy. We're just all around like this. It took everything in me. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit to keep me from putting my hand around that child's neck. And at the end of the game, I walked up to the coach. I said, coach. You got to help me, man. Give me something. Give me something. Tell me something about it. Give me some sweets or something to help me through this. What should I do? He looked at me and goes, I don't know. <laughs> He's six. So he six. Sometimes our kid is just going to be six. six. <laughs> Sometimes they're going to be 24 and act like they're six. Sometimes they just going to be six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went 
the corn maze with the kids uh, about two or three weeks ago, and young Mike was there. Uh, he comes to the church, young Mike. I can't think of his young name, his, his last name. And I said, I'm going to hook up with Mike. I'm going to tell you this story about the young man over here. I'm going to let him go tonight. I'll see him next week. But he went, and he just took off running. Yeah. I was saying to myself, I'm like, where is this boy going? Where is he? Don't he know he made a corn maze? <laughs> this is a maze. Where do you think he's going? And he just took off running. You know what I did? I just ran with it. I'm just running. We just running. Whether we run, brother, we just running. I had no idea where we're going. We just running. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, our kids are just going to be six. Sometimes they just going to be six. And you're going to look at them and go, you just six. You just six years old. I know you're 42, but you just six right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I know who you are, but you just six. I tell you, like I said earlier, you know, I had to. Now, these are lessons I had to learn, brother. So I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I had to learn these lessons because, brother, when I, like I said, when my kids was, my kids was little, I was, was kind of like a tyrant, man. I tell you, my, well, my emotions on my sleeve. So I had to learn to be patient with them, right? And God has taught me that through the years. So they say, guess what? I'm patient with you. Amen. 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 Wait a minute now. I'm patient with you, so we be patient with our kids. That's how we create that clean heart. Yes. That's how we create that environment where they feel safe. That's how we create that environment where they feel accepted. And most important, they feel loved. Yes. Right? Now, I, mean, I believe in Spain. Amen. 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 All right, there we go. Yeah. You know I didn't even on that one. <laughs> well, no, I believe in I believe in a little spanking every once in a while. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Amen. Amen. It's okay. I know church Christ. You say amen. I know when you church Christ, you still say amen. But I, I, but that, but I believe in every once in a while you got to tighten in the rain. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You gotta train them, you gotta right. teach them. Right. But sometimes they just gonna be six. Yeah. Ain't nothing you gonna do. Ain't nothing you gonna do. Sometimes they just going to be six. And my last point, brothers and sisters, the last point I wanna talk about. First, you got the only way you're gonna create the clean heart is with God's word. Mm -hmm. Second way, you gotta love and encourage them. Gotta love and encourage them. Mm -hmm. if, if I go back to nothing else, that love and encourage part, that's going to get you more ground than anything. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is, believe it or not, is we got to give them back. Yeah. We got to give them back to God. Now I know as parents, yeah. we want to give our kids stuff. Mm -hmm. We want to give them stuff. Mm -hmm. now, no, no, no. We, it, it feels good when you give your kids stuff. No, come on now. Amen. You take them to the Hollywood Mall. Yeah. yeah, they've been begging you. They've been begging you to go take them ski lessons that they won't use ever and ever and ever again. <laughs> you know, they, they say, Daddy, please let me take ski lessons. I want to take skiing lessons. You ask them to go skiing now, they won't go nowhere with it. <laughs> you know, they beg you and beg you for that Letterman jacket. You know, where they stick all of the packages on the jacket for $300. And they still hang in your closet for 25 years. They come home and they say, we want to we want to take band, and one of them says, I want to play a tenor sax. And you, and you go to the store and you find out that you can't afford a new tenor sax. So you talk to the man and the man puts you on a payment plan. Say it. Right? Say it. Yeah, yeah. You take it in to repair, and the repairman looks at you and gets mad at you. Because you let the child tear the tin of sacks up so bad. So we want to give our kids good things. We do. But the most important thing that we give them is we give them back to the Lord. Right. Right. There's a story in the Bible of a lady. She desperately desperately wanted a child. She desperately wanted a child. She prayed and she made a commitment to the Lord. And she said, Lord, if you bless me with this child, I'm going to give this child back to you. That's right. That's right. 
You give me this precious gift. Mm -hmm. And that's what they are. Right. I know sometimes they don't right. feel that way. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes you just want to put them outside. Well. You hope that somebody come by and pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> or you want to drive by somebody's house and just kind of... <laughs> 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 Yeah. I've heard people do that. <laughs> and she prayed. And she made a commitment to the Lord. And she said, Father, if you give me this child, I will give this child back to you. Amen. Hannah was that woman. That's right. And the Bible says that after the baby was weaned, Mm -hmm. seven. Mm -hmm. She took the baby up to the temple mm -hmm. and kept her commitment and gave him back to the priest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a result of her making that commitment and giving him back, Israel was blessed with yes, one sir. of the greatest spiritual leaders of their time. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the man called Samuel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, mm -hmm. how many of us have in our possessions or in our influence or in our care the next gospel preacher. That's all right. That's all right. The next elder. The next preacher or elder's wife. The next Bible class teacher. Now, the next engineer. The next doctor. Now, they can do all that stuff. But how great are those gifts being used in the church before the kingdom of God? That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 So when we start thinking about what it means to create a clean heart in our children and create a clean heart in those little ones, there's nothing more precious than the heart of a child. That's right. Mm -hmm. Good preaching. And there's nothing more valuable than the heart of a child. Yes, and when we think about how do we create that clean heart, and not only in that child, but guess what? In some of us old folk do. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's right. Amen. 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 You know, I'm telling you right now, brother, your, your, your lesson talked to me this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, when you were talking about yourself and in your, in your life, I'm like, brother, I'm in the same boat you are. I'm going right along with you. So I got some sins I'm trying to get over. I got some prayers I'm working on. I got some, just, just as well. Just as well. That's right. Amen. Because last I checked, we all trying to make heaven our home. That's right. Anybody here not trying to make heaven at home? He who without sin passed the first stone. That's right. I'm in the boat then. I'm going away. I'm rolling away. So we create that clean heart in our children. Number one with God's word. Teach. Mm -hmm. yes. Edify. Lift them up with God's word. Every opportunity you get, something about the Lord. Teach them God's word. Every chance you get. Second point, love them and encourage them. Oh, that, go, that gets you more mileage than anything you can probably think of. With a godly love. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you don't stand. That's right. Amen. But you love them. Be patient. Sometimes they're just going to be six. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it's going to be. They're going to be 55 and sometimes be six. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, that commitment to give them back to them. Amen. Give them back to them. You know, how many of you guys flown before? How many of you guys fly on an airplane before? Oh, you, ever, you, ever, they, you know, they always tell you that in the event of an emergency, the mass drop down, mm -hmm. right? And you ever notice that they say if you're traveling with children, who you put the mask on first? Yourself. Yourself. <laughs> Before I can even begin to help my child, I got to be right. I have to be right. Before I can put that life preserver on my child and help them and create that clean heart in them, I must be right first. I must be flying right first. So it always starts with me. Amen. With the man in the mirror. Right. There was a song after that, right? right. It always starts with me. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you at this morning or this evening. Mm -hmm. Are you at peace with God tonight? Yeah. Right. Are you in a relationship with God? Let me briefly go through that really quick so that no one leaves here tonight without understanding. Like if I want to get right with God, 
what must I do? You know, Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says the, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Right? right? That's what Paul said. He says, that, he, says that, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Yes, sir. Right. I, that means I'm not ashamed about it and everything within it. Yes, I'm not ashamed of it. Yes, sir. Because in the gospel, there's the power of God unto salvation. That's, right. That's how I get there. Right. The gospel, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? Amen. Right. Amen. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I repent of my sins, Acts 2.38. I confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and then I'll be baptized. Now, I want to spend a couple minutes here. That word, baptize, you know that verb, baptize, is a translation. Mm -hmm. It means baptizo, which means to immerse. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. Go in. Yes, that's sir. why the Bible says we're buried with Jesus to rise and walk in newness of life, right? Yeah. Yeah. right. Now on TV, you'll see a little of this, right? You might see some, some of this, right? You might see where the guy takes the, takes, the, takes the thumb thing and they kind of do like that on your forehead. That's not baptism. Uh, doing like this. That's not baptism. I'm not trying to hit you, bro. But doing like this, that's not baptism. <laughs> Baptism is when we take you and we put you down in the water yes. to rise and walk in newness of life. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Ethiopian eunuch says, here is water. Yeah. Yeah. What hinders me yes, sir. to be baptized. The Bible says they went where? Down, down into the water. That's right. To baptize them. Mm -hmm. They rise and walk in newness of life and they live in faithful life. I don't know where you're at tonight. I don't know if you need any prayers of the saints. But we have an opportunity to do that. Good Brother, who's got the song tonight? Good you got the song tonight? Yeah. I want to ask that you guys stand. Good preaching. Yeah. And if anybody has any needs of the church, at any all, let it be known while we sing the song. There's not a friend like the Holy Jesus. Sing it. 